After a long period of silence, the Boko Haram leader Abu Bakr Shakao has reacted to a recent call by the governor of Bornu State urging insurgents to lay down their arms and embrace government's amnesty program. Now, Mr. Shakao faulted the governor's claim that some of the insurgents that were forced to join Boko Haram are tired of fighting. The Boko Haram leader said none of his members was tired and that they would continue fighting until their very last Brett. Still with me in the studio is Shegu Sopichon. Thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you for having me. So I'll just ask first your reaction to that story. He's been silent for quite a while and now he's back. He's died about three times now. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting that this is it's, third it's resurrection. Absolutely. So, you know, I, 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 I've always said that, that that name is more of a title now, um, you know, because Right from way back during President Goodluck Jonathan's time, he was killed. Shekhar was killed. And then the Buhari administration has killed him twice. Right? So, who's this guy? Um, um, that, that's, that's uh, uh, I mean, a new perspective <laughs> to the conversation yeah. because a lot I mean, of persons would say that it apparently means they haven't killed him. If somebody still looks like him and yeah. talks like him and it's out there. If you watch those videos um, carefully, it's not the same person. Um, so the, the, the facial structure-wise, to make a guy look, to make men look alike, just give them a beard, you know. <laughs> sure the the same beard complexion, gang. Yeah, you know, and, and they look alike. So, I mean, but if you, if you scrutinize those videos, it's, it's, usually, it's not the same guy. Okay, so um, he's saying they're not tired of yeah, fighting yeah. in reaction to a call for amnesty. I, I, I what do guess, you think? I guess what's happening is, is a response to what appears to be for the first time a genuine um, 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 push towards victory. You can never win the war on terror fully anywhere in the world. Terrorists, because they're not afraid of dying, it's almost impossible to defeat them. How do you defeat a man who straps things around his tummy and goes to blow people up, including himself, right? So you can't really win the war on terror in terms of completely decimating them and you don't have Boko Haram anymore. But you can um, keep them, uh, their operations to the barest minimum, right? And I think that we're beginning to see signs that that might actually happen. Um, so, so it looks to me, this move looks to me like a desperate effort to make a showing. Remember that the, 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 the ter terror, terror as a tool, as a political and ideological tool, is all about information and propaganda. If you lose the propaganda war, you will lose the war. Um, just a week or two weeks ago, the Nigerian army um, actually tried to, even though those things were sort of um, misinterpreted and sensationalized, but there was, there was a deliberate effort on the part of the Nigerian army to move the, 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 the battlefield to the ideological side by trying to enlist the religious leaders in those places, imams and especially the imams, right? Because Boko Haram is an Islamic group. So it's an ideological war, and I think what they're just trying to do um, what Boko Haram is trying to do is to stage a presence, to say, we still do, we're still here. That's what that video is. You know, it's just trying to make noise and show that, yeah. you know, we'll, we're still We'll come back to the question of uh, why did it take so long for these strategies to become manifest. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll ask, I'll stay with that release on um, another alleged audio from him. Yeah. Uh, in that um, release, there was... He played a recording of the governor of mm -hmm. Bonu State um, making that appeal. And the, the report on Premium Times was worried about how he got his hands yeah. on it. And they alluded to the possibility sure. of terrorists sure. infiltrating the IDP camps. Maybe that was where he got it from. Yeah. Does it worry you that we are somehow unintentionally catering for the same terrorist we're trying to um, uh, bring down. What is your take on this? I mean, it's, it's, it, it worries me, but then again, um, this is not unusual. I mean, it, we, we must not forget that these terrorists are not ghosts. They're not spirits. They're actual human beings, sometimes that live right amongst us in the towns and the cities and the villages. And then, you know, um, they might 
when the need arises, retreat back to their camps in the bushes or wherever they stay. But, but they live amongst us, right? So having them in the IDP camps or having them be present when um, a government official is giving a speech and recording is not strange. It's not a new thing at all. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. You know, what about the fact that even in our security forces, they seem to have sympathizers? Because there are, there are incidents where it's very clear that the, this guy is new. They had information sometimes about the movement of our troops um, or sometimes about what's going on. Maybe some, some new weapons or food logistics supplies are being moved by the military and then they get ambushed by Boko Haram. How did they know? You know, so there's a lot going on there. But again, I must say it's not unusual. Well, well how can the military counter this? Because intelligence gathering is one of the key uh, parts of the fight. If they, they are saboteurs in the military, in the IDP camps, and practically almost everywhere, how, how are we going to win this war? I, I, I think that, and I'm going to say this without fear or favor, right, that the military hierarchy at the top echelons need to get serious about um, fighting this war genuinely, they really want it to end. Um, so there's a lot about this war on terror, whether it's here in Nigeria or other parts of the world, but more so here, that is actually some sort of a racket, right? Um, I have um, information and connections in that axis, and what I hear is, is heart-wrenching and heartbreaking, right? Um, there's, there's a lot that we can't say on air, but there's a lot going on um, with this war on terror that suggests that some people are benefiting from it, right? So it's, it's not in the interest of those people for this war to end. Therefore, if we want to end this war, there are two um, um, sides to, to um, approaches and angles that we must come from. One is to take on these people whoever they are, interest, let me just call them interest, within our security infrastructure or architecture. There are interests there that needs to be taken down. And then our military, like you said, the intelligence side of things, must win over the civilian populations in these villages, such that we need to weed out sympathizers. We need to deal with the ideological side. I mean, listen to that video, Shekau, was pretty much preaching. Yes, he was. I mean, it was, it was odd. It was all these speeches and videos that I've watched or read about were, were always about threats. We're going to kill these people. We're going to do this. But this time, he was talking about Islamic principles and all that. Correcting the, Correcting the governor's the governor. uh, position. <laughs> about the position of the, of, of the Quran on certain issues. You know, so... There's, there's, a, there's a need for a, a shift in our mindset on how we're approaching this war because we're no longer dealing with um, um, the original Boko Haram that started in 2011. This is an evolved version. They've evolved several times and have um, strong backing as its common knowledge. ISIS, ISWAP, and all of those things are also at play here. So we've, our strategy must also change. So I think that um, the military um, um, hierarchy needs to look at how to enlist the ordinary Nigerian in those places. You, to you, fight you, this you, war you, you, you talked about the other strategy being um, employed by the military, and that includes prayer, getting yeah. um, religious leaders, and all of that. But let's talk about the one that the governor that caused this statement to come out from Sheikh Arao. He's saying he's going to give amnesty to mm. these people. Mm. Should we be giving amnesty to terrorists who have held a certain section of this country in terror oh, for almost, if not more than 10 years? Should we? Is that a strategy that makes sense? It's, 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 um, it's a bit of a conflicting, I'm, I'm conflicted about it. Because on the one hand, you want to be practical and deal with the issue with whatever strategy will work, you know, from a pragmatic point of view. So if you remember the Niger Delta issue, 
it's always that's what they keep referring to when they talk about amnesty for Boko Haram, you know, and terrorists. That, and some would argue that no, the militants were not terrorists, but rather they were freedom fighters and whatever. Excuse me, they were blowing things up. And even though they didn't, one major difference was that they didn't go out to deliberately kill people. They would blow up facilities and all that. But there was collateral damage, and people were dying, right? So those guys got amnesty, and that, and that amnesty program is still running. So there is that side of the argument that will say, well, if you give amnesty to these ones, if amnesty will also work for these terrorists, why not? Um, so maybe. Now, if you will do that at all, then I would assume, and I think that's what the governor was actually saying, the amnesty program is not necessarily targeted at the hardcore. It's those that have yes, repented hardcore, of their extremely evil Extremely radicalized ways. terrorists. It's more for the ones that are reluctant recruits. Yeah, just one quick you know. question before we wrap things up. Yeah. Um, why is it that we are yet to capture this man? Is it possible for us to actually get him and end this? Even if you get him, if you kill, if you actually, I mean, like I said, I, I, you know, this guy has been the original, their leader was, in fact, the, the um, creation of Boko Haram was because the original leader, Ibrahim, um, what's his name, Mohammed Ibrahim, was killed, right? And then, you know, in Metamorphosis, we had a Shekau who was captured. There were pictures of him dead, right? And then we still got another Shekau. So if you kill this guy, another one whoever is the leader, somebody else will step in because it's an ideological Is there war. an end? It's a like, inside. It, it, there, there will be an end if we fight it well. Not a total end, but you can degrade them to the point where they're pretty much largely harmless. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with thank us you as very always. Much for me. Appreciate it. And thank you for staying with us. But we're not done yet. We'll go on a short break for a plus package. And when we return, I will give you my very short take. Stay with us. The National Assembly Joint Committee on the Army, led by Senator Ali Undume, has visited the Theater Command Operation Lafayette Dole to assess the ongoing operation. The committee was given the mandate to tour all the army formations in the six geopolitical zones in the country to assess current situation within the area of operation. The delegates went round within and outside my degree to see the troops at the front line on how they are faring and to reassure them of the federal government support in the course of fighting the insurgent. The Joint Committee equally interacted with the troops at different locations to know their challenges and difficulties. Visit and see for ourselves the condition you are working in, what you are going through, and to make on the spot assessment and to also hear from you what are the needs what are the things that you need to work effectively? But before we go on to that, I wish to, on behalf of this committee, joint committee, and the National Assembly, and of course the entire country, we truly appreciate you. I want you to know that Nigerians are with you, and not only with you, Nigerians appreciate you. One thing I want to assure the chairman and uh, the distinguished lawmakers and disassociate theater command and the entire operation last year at the front are the prophecies of doom about how the towns in Northern Bruno will fall, Settlements in Yobe State will not be able to be sustained and all this rubbish. Please tell them in Abuja, not a single town will fall under me. Not one. I promised Nigeria when I took over seven weeks ago that I'm going to take the fight to Boko Haram. Officers and men have really supported me. Of course, with the help of the service headquarters. All the towns that usually fall in the dry seasons are standing and doing well. We were tested, badly shaken. But not in the hand of capable people. It will not fall. Not when I'm here. There's a way you solve a problem, it will change the game. 
Army need combat helicopters to hand Boko Haram war. If we have it, if we have it, it will not be deployed like the Air Force asset. Air Force assets are for bigger strategic goals. These helicopters will sleep with us at the trench. They will stay in the front line, so the helicopter and the rifle and the tanks will be together. I know this has been on the table for years. When this is done, Nigeria can forget about Boko Haram. Let me say this, Boko Haram is not... Commendations are in order for federal government's obvious effort to return the budget cycle from January to December. However, like many have acknowledged, the document is an immensely ambitious one when considered in terms of the anticipated revenue. It is therefore important that while the National Assembly is committed to the speedy passage of the budget, her efforts must not water down the need for proper and intense scrutiny in the interest of the people, for that is her primary responsibility. And that's all we draw the cotton on today's program. I would love to hear from you. Please use any of our social media handles at Plus TV Africa to share your thoughts on our conversations here. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.